need some inspiration for your descriptive writing? Well, let me share with you 10 glorious moments from the short stories of George Edgerton. Get some ideas, produce some more sophisticated descriptive writing. Stay tuned, Schofield on Shakespeare. This video will contain a delicious descriptive sentence on the areas shown on screen. It goes without saying that you shouldn't just memorise them and use them verbatim within your own writing. But you may want to memorise the odd tweaked, reworked phrase to make your descriptive writing more vivid and beautiful. It was a silver grey evening with just the last lemon and pink streaks of the sunset staining the sky. I love the hyphenated colour of the silver grey. I don't normally associate these colours together with the evening. I love the less usual lemon combined by the more obvious pink. The sibilance also works well, doesn't it? Silver streaks, sunset, staining sky. And how about that present participle, staining, suggesting lovely blotches of colour dotted around the sky. The sun sinks in a superb, audacious blending of hues. Orange and scarlet, pink and blue, and lemon yellow streaks with splotches of intensest purple are hurled from a palette of fire in a frenzy of colour. More delicious colours here, with this time lemon yellow being hyphenated. Look at the violence and energy of the verb hurled, suggesting how the colours are all shoved together and the artistic metaphor of a palette of fire. Beautiful. A strip of blue fjord and a background of dark mountains, with the cool ice kisses of the Snow Queen still resting on their dusky heads, can be seen at intervals through the fir and pine trees. Some lovely personification here. We have the Snow Queen dishing out cool ice kisses onto the top of the mountains and the lakes. Notice how the trees are specified. They are fir and pine. A squirrel scrambles up a rowan tree and a cattle bell tingles far in the woods. Again, Edgerton is being more specific. It isn't just a tree, it is a rowan tree, whatever that is. Plus look at the unusual use of the verb tingle typically used to describe sensation. Here, it seems to refer to a little tinkling sound. A little brown bird is fluttering in helpless, terrified jerks. It emits, as it rises and falls, a sharp sound between a chirp and a squeak. I love the unusual sound the brown bird makes, which can't quite be described. It is a sharp sound between a chirp and a squeal. Levels of ambiguity can make writing more interesting. Semicolon used accurately. Overhead, a flotilla of clouds is steering from the south in a northeasterly direction. Her eyes follow them. Old time galleons, she thinks, with her wealth of snowy sails spread, riding breast to breast up a wide blue fjord after victory. Look at the way the imagery is extended here. The idea of the clouds being a flotilla, a large group of boats, is extended into the second sentence within the character's imagination. They become old time galleons with their wealth of snowy sails spread out. Notice the delicious, beautiful sibilance there. Overall, we get a sense of the serene majesty of these sets of clouds in the sky. The tails of several ducks can be seen above the water, and the paddle of their balancing feet and the gurgling suction of their bills as they search for larvae can be heard distinctly between the hum of insects, twitter of birds and rustle of stream and leaf. Some lovely sucking sounds here, gurgling suction.
and specific references to the appropriate body parts of the ducks. Bills are the beaks of a bird. Notice the tricolon at the end. Hum of insect, twitter of bird and rustle of stream and leaf. This works fluidly because each component part consists of the structure noun of noun. I am conscious of a buzzing in my ears and a dancing blur of water and sky and trees. As I wait, it seems to be an hour for her reply. Look how we too are made to wait through the way the sentence is structured and the punctuation. Dash, it seems to me an hour. Dash. The polysyndeton gives us a sense of the narrator being overwhelmed by a range of different sensations and sights, a buzzing in my ears and a dancing blur of water and sky and trees. There's been a mighty storm. It has been raging for two days, a storm in which the demon of drink has reigned like a sinister god in the big white house, and the frightened women have cowered away, driven before the hot blast of the breath upon which curses danced. Good writing can trick us from time to time. Here we are initially fooled into thinking that the storm is outside the house and relates to the natural elements. It doesn't. It relates to the alcoholic man of the house, who is labelled metaphorically as the demon of drink who has reigned like a sinister god. Once again, we're seeing that using multiple related images together, rather than just a single potentially tired simile or metaphor, can create a powerful effect. Her eyes are a fishy green-grey, the left eyelid droops. When she thinks you are not looking, a sly, elusive gleam brightens them. Unusual colours. The eyes are fishy green-grey. As ever, it is often less attractive description which, is, which can interest us more. Note the enjoyment the woman appears to get from furtively figuring out other people. Hence the gleam. This has been a Scopefield on Shakespeare production. Many thanks for watching.